All right, puzzlers, I have officially started my very first 3000 pieces jigsaw puzzle. I can't wait to share all the details with you. Come on in. Yes, you heard it right. I have started my very first 3000 pieces jigsaw puzzle and this one is the Mapamundi 1665 by Puzzle Grow in collaboration with Ravensburger or Ravensburger. The year is 2001 and it is the very first, listen to this, it is the very first puzzle that I ever bought with my own money some 20 something years ago. And in today's video, which is going to be part number one, I will be sharing with you all of my adventures with the sorting process and also with the first part of the puzzle which is going to be that top part over there and then i will stop right there in that yellow line which we're going to talk about uh, very shortly okay so hopefully in part number two i will have this all finished okay let's talk about the sorting process now and i will see you at the very end of the video with some more information and also some very important housekeeping enjoy now because this is so much bigger than any other puzzle that i solved before i literally went for it and let destiny decide what to sort first and the first piece that i grabbed was a very large writing with some beige kind of light yellow color so that would be the first group the second group is a beige background with lots of lines the other one that I found was tiny writings with yellowish beige background, so I'm going to keep them separate. Then I came across a whole bunch of, um, you know, of the framing. So I decided to initially to keep all the framing together. Here's some more of the yellow writing. Then I started finding the very exciting pieces with the faces, so I kept them separated as well in uh, their own tray. Now, this is where I think I started to struggle a little bit. So these were the, the bits that had a lot of browns, uh, yellow and reds. So I try to keep them all together. Next, I have these pieces with uh, an orange line and a yellow line. Now, these ones are what I was talking about in the introduction. Those are the frame within a frame. And I try to keep them all together. Now, I have this bunch of pieces with beige background and loads of writing of different sizes, parts of maps, and some weird drawings. So, I try to keep them all together just to start with. And then, obviously, this is going to change completely in just a couple of minutes. So this is what I got for the time being. Beige with very large writings. Edges with different colors and different patterns. In a framing with that orange sort of braid framing of sorts. Now these are the face pieces and I've included animals as well beige background with lots of lines and minimal writings pieces with lots of small but quite clear writings very distinct yellow and orange lines throughout the pieces and finally everything else now this includes pieces with reds blues oranges and these are the pieces that i'll have to resort multiple times later on Alright guys, just before we continue, I want to very quickly acknowledge the brilliant and very talented cartographer who created such a map, such a beautiful map. Now, Willem Bleu is the same person as Guillaume Bleu. Forgive my pronunciation, okay? But anyway, according to geographicus.com, which is linked in the description of this video. There is a lot of confusion in regards to who Guillermo's or Willem uh, Bleu, who are these people? Apparently there's half a dozen of them trying to claim the maps for themselves. So check the link once you finish this video and read the whole story. And if you wanna see a super high quality image of this jigsaw puzzle, 
I will post the link in the description as well to the intercard.de website, which apparently sells uh, original maps such as this one. But now let's talk about how I'm going to solve this puzzle. Even though I have no experience with anything bigger than 2000, I know for sure I have to be very strategic. So I will start with whatever is the most obvious. In this case, the sentence in the center, which reads, a new map of the entire world, including the new world. Then, as I mentioned in the beginning, I will tackle all the people on the top of the puzzle, but I will try to complete every single one before moving on to the next. And this will include the blue for the sky behind them and also all the framing on that part of the puzzle only. Because you know what? The last thing I want is the frame to be in the way for me to solve the interior parts of this puzzle, which is so big and I'm highly likely to have to lean on the table multiple times. So I'll leave the rest of the frame for much later. And so the journey begins. Uh, here is the first part of the, um, you know, the, the, the writings, the big writings, which were very easy and straightforward. All I needed to do was to pretty much match the bits and pieces of each one of those letters. And the good thing about this particular puzzle is that I'm not entirely sure if you guys can see it, but there are several tones of beige to the background. Sometimes it was pretty much dark gray. So spotting those different uh, color changes or subtle color tones was actually really straightforward. And once I was almost finished with the much larger writings, I started to transition into the top part of the puzzle. And that came about as this light with dark green pieces with some of the writing on them. So I knew they would be uh, just on top of the larger writing. Sort of introducing what was coming next, which was the, uh, you know, the royal people and the horses but they go on the top part of the puzzle. And this is what I was talking about before. I wish I had done my sorting properly beforehand because now I'm having to hunt down all the pieces that have those uh, sort of orangey and black writings and also those beautiful green bits. And it didn't actually take much long for me to complete that beautiful green part, which by the way, for those who don't know, this type of painting or style is called hatching. And then when the lines cross each other, we call cross hatching, which really reminds me of the puzzle I solved recently. And I think it was called clandestine cliches. And I'll leave the link in the descriptions for anyone interested. And it was in this part that I started transitioning to yet another part of the puzzle, which is right under the larger writings. If you look closely, you will see small orange markings or orange lines and i thought mm, okay i've seen this before i think this is where those pieces with the orangey braid sort of decoration that's what they're gonna go so i went back to the to the trays and i got all of those out and i started completing that part as i could And once I depleted all of the orangey braid designs that you can see here, I started getting the new bits that go right underneath them, but they will have to wait for now. Let's focus on the top part of the puzzle for now. And just to give you a sense of scale and also the progression of the puzzle, this is what I got so far. I've got the very large writings, the small writings, which are the names under the horses and the orange frames under the large writings. Now, because I wanted to work with the top part of this puzzle, I quickly realized that my sorting was kind of in the toilet. So I had to bring back all of the edge pieces and I had to separate them again or sort them again by color. So I got all the blue beads, which is what I need right now for the the very top part of the puzzle and the blue beads are actually going to be the sky because my 
goal here was to be extremely organized in solving this puzzle. I didn't want to end up with bits and pieces all over the place. I wanted to tackle one area and finish that area to the very last piece. And that is exactly what I've done here. So this is the top left corner of the puzzle. And moving forwards, quite a number of hours. Don't ask me how many hours I've, I've taken to complete this part, but this is it. Isn't it something special? And as I was saying before, one of the things that I had to do along the way as I started working with the, uh, you know, the horses, the faces, the people, the bits of the sky, I had to get many of the pieces resorted. And then from the resorting, I placed them on their own trays in a very organized fashion. And that made my life a lot easier. And it has been such a joy to complete this part of the puzzle because of the sense of space and sense of organization that I have kept throughout this whole process. And again, this is just my opinion, okay? It, personally speaking, I feel like if I did not have had this approach to this puzzle, I think I would have panicked by now and I would have given up already. So I am, in this sense, I am so glad I spent hours and hours and hours with the sorting part. But instead of just talking about it, let me show you where I am at with the sorting at this stage, which has changed quite a lot since the beginning of this uh, project. So I've got two uh, compartments on my large tray for the bits and pieces with the reds and oranges and darks. Then I have bits with sun. I have other bits with double lines with yellow lines as well. So it's a, a yellow line and uh, an orange line on the side of it. Unfortunately, I have pieces with missing bits, uh, which I'll have to glue back together when I get to them. I have the dark framing parts. Then I have the, uh, the, the lighter framing or edges with those orange lines or yellow lines. And here are uh, the continuation of the double lines with yellows. Then moving on, I've got slightly gray background pieces with lines. Then I have dark yellow writings. Faces remain as faces with their own, um, with their own compartment. Then here I have a mixture of different pieces with lines on them, but they vary a little bit in terms of the background. Some of them have tones of yellow and some of them have either gray or tones of blue. So I kept them separate for now. And because I am so committed to keeping everything as tidy as possible, I'm only training the pieces that I need at the time. So I'm literally working with one or two trays at the time. And then I have that much larger tray with the deep compartments where all the pieces are kept, such as this one here on the screen. All right, and here is a final overview of today's uh, achievement. And just remember guys, this is not a one sitting situation. Whenever I have a couple of minutes to spare after work or on the weekends or at night, in the middle of the night, I will just come and solve the puzzle as much as I can. But this, this particular puzzle will probably take me at least a couple of weeks to complete. And this is yet another transition to the other parts of the puzzle, which to me kind of feels like a completely different puzzle altogether. So just look at those shapes now and think about them when I start part number two for this puzzle. So I've already got a couple of indications that things are gonna get really difficult. I am really enjoying this puzzle and I cannot wait to have this hung behind uh, the, the computer screen and the TV. It's gonna look really cool. I've got a lot of space. I'm just gonna move the camera a little bit. There. I've got this painting, which I got at the warehouse in New Zealand, but I'm, my plan is to have 
of the 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 puzzle wow there's a lot of noises there my plan is to have this puzzle here on this wall behind me at some stage now i'm looking at solving bigger and bigger puzzles so i guess the uh, the gates have been open and there's no turning back now i am a very happy puzzler today now guys just a couple of things that i wanted to mention about the the puzzle uh, from the parts that i'm working on at the moment i had so much fun completing this part here even the blue part which was a, a little bit daunting um, i had so much fun i had to look at those sometimes it's kind of blurry there isn't it sometimes i had to count the number of little lines on the uh, on the clouds just to find the right pieces and that was um, really challenging but not impossible and as uh, someone has mentioned uh, in the comments that solving puzzles jigsaw puzzle uh, with maps are a lot easier than we might actually assume because the the writings and it kind of makes sense you know all the writings will give you a clear indication of the orientation of the pieces and another thing that um, i think it is worth mentioning is you notice that i started the sorting with only a couple of pieces eh? like a major groups like um, you know the blues for the sky and then all the big writings and all the other pieces and pieces with the um, you know the framing and the orangey framing as well all the faces but then as i got acquainted with the puzzle and as i started solving i started noticing all the patterns and the different colors and it was absolutely necessary that i resorted the um, the trays and i ended up having to do that so many times throughout this first part and i'm sure that in part two of this um, this jigsaw puzzle or video i will end up having to resort this multiple times and i'm already preparing myself psychologically for that but anyway guys thank you so much for watching this video if you enjoyed it make sure you hit the like buttons there for me but let's just do a couple of housekeeping before i go okay i have recently posted uh, or shared with you my amazon wishlist in which i sort of keep all of my most wanted jigsaw puzzles and some of you have actually bought the puzzles for me so thank you so much that is so cool and i cannot wait to share more updates in that regard um, with you guys i've also posted recently some buy me a coffee uh, links in which if you feel like it you know you can send a small donation and what i have done is i have used that donation those donations to buy secondhand puzzles so i'm preparing a really cool video for you guys in which i'm sharing the the places i got the puzzles from and obviously the puzzles themselves so that video is also coming now guys if you really enjoyed this uh, map jigsaw puzzle check the map collection video that i posted recently and you can see it right here on the screen now so just click on it and if you want to see my latest the jigsaw puzzle solving that is not a map just make sure you check this video right here so i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching